Hey guys, how you doing? We're back again. Myself, Barry Stephen, in case you've forgotten who I am. Yep. And my friend, he's still my friend. Nice. Go on. Matthew Percival. <laughs> Thanks, Barry. I appreciate that. How are you? Are you doing well? I am doing fantastic. Guys, this is the second time we've started this recording because we... Because I messed up the first one. I'll take responsibility. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, guys. So we're very aware we haven't met up for a long time, um, as always with this podcast. Hopefully we still have some valuable people listening in and some, interested some good in content as well for what you. we've got to say. Yeah. Uh, but it's a, it's a bit, of, bit of a catch-up session, isn't it, Matthew? Yeah, it's going to be. We're going to chat about stuff. Very chill, isn't but it? But again... As I, as I said in the previous recording that you guys will never hear, <laughs> um, we've been bad with it, haven't we? Prioritizing doing this. And again, it's relatable to people who are not prioritizing their fitness and prioritizing going to the gym and their health. Mm-hmm. And we have not been prioritizing this. You leave on the back burner. Do we have time to do it? Yes. Have we given time to do it? No, but we're back now. And I feel like we're going into a month where a lot of people are going to not prioritize their fitness. Health their and health. fitness. So we, what we're going to be... We're going to motivate you by us prioritizing doing this, Barry, aren't we? If we can prioritize yeah. this, you guys can prioritize your fitness. Put it this way, right? If we can get four episodes out in December. Uh, we're calling right? ourselves out right now. If we can get four episodes out in December, and we're only doing one tonight, by the way, um, you guys can get to the gym and get your sessions in every week in December. Yeah, um, we're going to do it. Because I get December is <laughs> one of those months where people are feeling in the party spirit and there's things on the weekend. Yeah. You know, I get that. And it's inherently miserable, isn't it, really? It's dark it's a cold all the month. time. It's been raining for like the last two weeks, I swear. Uh-huh. I've seen a sun for about an hour. It is, it is a one of the... Well, I don't want to say December's a depressing month because December's Christmas. Yeah, I, I feel like like the end of November is a tough time for people, though. I, I, that November spell. December's nice because it's like, oh, it's Christmas time going to have some time off, I'm going to see my family, etc. that sort of stuff. You know, we're going to have a big Christmas dinner meal and all that sort of stuff. It's good. But um, I think this time of year is quite difficult for a lot of people. So if there's people out there that are thinking, nah, I can't be, can't be bored of the gym. Can't be bored of the gym. It's too cold. It's too dark. Do it. I'm not getting up. I said, let's do it. No, I, I think, vi- I, I How do we vitamin motivate D. them? Vitamin D and then make sure... See when <laughs> Vitamin D, that's all you need. Genuinely, it makes a big difference. I, I wasn't taking it and I stopped for a while. And then recently I've started retaking it, obviously with it being so dark, you don't get any sunlight. You feel a lot better. You genuinely do feel a lot better. It's, it's, it's not super noticeable, but it's slightly noticeable. I definitely think people should be getting outside in the... Yeah. If it's day, daylight, daylight, get hours. outside. Yeah. Don't wait for it to be daylight and then go, oh, maybe I'll do something later because suddenly it's going to be dark again. Get out. Because it's quite possible you'll be going to work when it's dark, coming home when it's dark. So if you've got that opportunity at lunchtime to maybe go for a wee walk. Yeah. Get the fresh air. On Good the, idea. Brilliant idea. Breathe in the, the sea breezes of Aberdeen. <laughs> then you might... You, you should do it. Yeah. You should Make do you it. Make you feel good. Make you feel the good. The sea breezes of Aberdeen. <laughs> what a time. Uh, so how have you been, Barry? You've been doing some exciting stuff. We were chatting earlier about so, your High Rocks event. Yeah, well, I did mention in some previous episodes that I had entered a High Rocks event. And I'm pleased to say that I, I followed through with it. Completed it. And you completed it, yeah. Did it in a time that I felt was respectable. One hour and 35 minutes. One hour and 35 minutes. One hour and 35 minutes and eight seconds. She was. I looked up. So I wanted to do it in an hour and 30 minutes. That was my goal. That's fair though, isn't it? Five minutes off. So it was five minutes off. But I feel like one hour 30 is pretty fast, right? I have to say, like, I th- there was maybe... It was kind of funny because maybe for the first third of it, I'm thinking... Oh, I'm doing so well. I feel so good. I've smashed this bit. What, I've smashed what that was bit. It? And then, then you had the wall balls and then <laughs> it all went downhill. No, it was way before then. And then I think maybe two thirds or just over halfway, two thirds way through, I was saying to myself, I'm never doing this again. This is, Did this you is have way like, harder um, than I thought it would be. Anything to keep you going during it, like to eat or drink or take or anything? I, I guess it's endurance. Now I'm 35, so quite a while. I didn't. Um, would you, would you, this time, if you did it again? Do you know what? I could see that people were taking gels at some part of, in the race because they were sort of lying on the floor and stuff like that when you're running around. Um, but because I hadn't really done any of that in training, I didn't yeah. want to start doing it on the day. In case, you know, you sometimes hear 
hear stories yeah, yeah, your first time people getting well. a sore stomach or whatever or a bad reaction you didn't want to gary lineker at the side of the pitch <laughs> so I, I didn't want to take any unnecessary risks fair um yeah but fair. I, I would say that i i feel i felt like i prepared really well the week leading up to it with in terms of like you know i went into it you know very very hydrated um i took you know electrolyte tablets and things like that mm-hmm. which i felt helped as well and you know i increased my carbohydrates with my meals and throughout the week and i i did actually feel pretty good, uh, good. on the day um it is mad isn't it <clears throat> how many how many k do you run so you run, you run 8k but you end up running probably close to 9k because you've got to do a little bit of movement in between like the rock zone and the running area which the rock zone is basically where all the 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 workouts are so okay yeah yeah so you you do an event in the the rocks so you got to run so you, you run, run your k but you're you run in there to your station do your do your work at your station then you run back run out back again out. Okay. so i think it accumulates up to something like nine kilometers or something like that um, yeah and then you're doing how many events is it it's eight different events well they call them workouts so there's there's one kilometer ski then it's a sled push it's 152 kilograms for 50 meters uh-huh. which i was very anxious about because i didn't do any uh, preparation for this we don't have one in our gym and yeah, I stupidly you, didn't even, go to anyone else's gym you messaged me like two weeks before being like have you got a sled in your gym <laughs> no <laughs> no that, to be fair, there's not many that to be fair that's you... that's kind of classic me um i'll you, you did it and yeah, I respect yeah. that. I prefer so, people who do things that don't prepare properly than people who just don't do things. Cause so I was quite worried about that because I, I, I've, I've, I've heard a lot of stories of people that like basically just die when, as soon as they get to that, like, and they don't recover very well for the rest of the race. Was it that hard? Is it really hard? Well, out of eight, 800 to 900 men that were doing it that day, I, I think I did it 93rd quickest for the sled. So I actually okay. did quite good at it. I did quite well. Um, yeah. And I felt like I was doing well when I was doing it. Don't get me wrong. It, it, like my legs were fucked. Toast. Yeah. I, Quads I, burning, calves I, gone. I tried, like, I tried my best to get straight into a run after it. It's too fast. That's brutal. <laughs> legs are fried. Yeah, go run a K. Oh, great. Yeah. You know, I looked like, I seriously looked like I was pissed. Um, <laughs> my, my legs were fucked for a good couple of minutes. But um, I got through it. Like, um, you know, I'd, I'd heard, you know, just, just get into your run, try and get yeah, yourself you moving and eventually you'll, your body will adapt and pick up and you'll get, you'll get back to a normal speed. And I, and I was a little bit slower with that run, but it was to be expected. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, but yeah, so sled push, sled pull, um, which is 102 kilograms on a big rope and you've got to pull it, you've got to pull the sled in, all the way up to you and then. You, you spin around, do it all the way back. You do that four times. I think that's 50 meters as well. Yeah, okay. 50, 50 meters. There's a little knack to doing that. Um, I actually quite enjoyed it. I, th- I thought I did okay at it because I had never practiced that one as well. Because um, you didn't have a sled. Because I don't have a sled. <laughs> but what, what events did you practice? Rowing? Rowing, did I practice rowing? Well, no, okay. I, skier? I don't have a rower. You, you don't have, okay. I've got a loaner. I, got, I did actually skier? get a rower. I got a rower. So you, you did I the did skier. practice a rower. I practiced skier. I practiced a rower. I did a lot of lunges. Shout out to, by the way, there's a, this, is, this is off your High Rocks topic. There's a guy who came, he comes to our gym and he and a team rowed across the Atlantic. And I've never, he would come on, come into the gym and row for like two and a half hours. And I've just never seen anything quite like it. Like had, fast. You had to make my challenge look pretty mediocre, didn't you? No, your challenge is great. But you said <laughs> rower and I thought distance on a row and I just remember him doing it. And I, you'd go over and like his pace was fast. And you're like, how are you doing that for two and a half hours? You're an animal. Anyway, back to the wall balls. <laughs> how heavy was the, the ball you had to so, throw for the wall balls? So the wall balls is at the end. So the, the last you, one? It's the very last one that you do. And oh, right, okay. you do a hundred repetitions. Of what weight? Six kilograms. A hundred reps, so it's brutal. To, I think it's like... And you got a target, I'm guessing you got yeah, to I hit. I think 10 foot or something like that. I don't know what the target is, but it's it's pretty high. Um, it's I quite like doing wall balls in the gym in, in a workout. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I feel like I'm quite good at them, but it was, it took me eight minutes. Yeah, it's brutal. It took me eight minutes. Like wall it. balls are hard. You can do like 10 reps and your heart rate's pretty high up. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so. you, you can see the finishing line. It's just 
literally five meters away. And you're like, Eight minutes of yeah, just got, throwing I've a got ball. 96 up wall balls to do yeah. before I can cross that. 92, 86. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but you know what, Matthew? I, I had a really good sense of achievement once it was done. It was one of those things where I knew that I'd pushed myself. I'd yeah. pushed myself out of my comfort zone. I'd trained harder than I would have been training for it. And then I got there and I sort of felt followed through with with my actions and I got it done and and I kind of enjoyed it as well. Although yeah. it was really hard, I kind of enjoyed it and I can see why lots of people are really interested in it. And and yeah, we're saying it's really really popular right now, isn't it? Crazy yeah. popular. Again, if you go you look at the podcast, Barry had to explain what it was to me. I'd never heard of it before, and now I've I hear everyone talking about it. Like literally everyone. It's on social media. People in our gym are doing high rocks training. Like you see, you see people in the gym. They'll come in. They'll go on a treadmill. And you're like, oh, they're going for a run. They're off a treadmill. They're on the skier. <laughs> I'm like, what? What's going on? And then they're in in our yard doing like wall balls. I'm like, so yeah, it's crazy how popular it is. You know what they're up to? Yeah, it's quite blatant. It's, it's definitely high rock training. But we did. Uh, I was telling you off off the podcast that so we did a, a skier challenge to the North Pole, and there was like four or five guys doing it, and it was brutal. It was so hard, and we couldn't get people onto the skier to get to join in. We couldn't drag them onto it. And now we can't get people off our skiers. Now you're buying skier. extra skiers, aren't you, for the gym? It's, a, it's an idea because the one we've got is getting used so much. The, th the thing is, is, the ski is right at the start of that. It's it's not a huge component of it either. And it, a and, thousand meters are not brutal. And if if you do your your research, you don't really want to tank that either. You kind of want to cruise go, it. Cru cruiser ish, you know what I mean. You don't want to yeah. go too slow, but you don't want to absolutely uh, kill I, yourself. I was doing like five k up to at a time. I think a thousand meters takes me like I'm trying to remember a couple minutes. No, four minutes. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, like yeah. four minutes. I'm trying to think about four minutes, like four or five minutes, maybe it took. Yeah, because I'm thinking like four, four or five k was like twenty odd minutes somewhere on there. I mean, fair play, you stayed on the, for that long. Like it, some what I, one guy came in when we were doing it, did a did a marathon on it. Shut up. Yeah, he came in for three hours. I think it was two and a half, three hours. He was like, I just want to see how I can get on. Thank God he did because we we needed the distance. <laughs> we needed it. But yeah, it's really popular right now. It's And it's interesting. People are obviously getting more, um, I'm just using the word interest again, interest in doing like fitness and improving their fitness, mm -hmm. the fitness challenges rather than like the, the strength challenges or like the bodybuilding, like the aesthetics, et cetera. It seems like fitness is a new trend. And everyone's doing it. Well, the gym, the gym doesn't have to always be about, you know, aesthetics. Yeah. Doesn't have to yeah. always be about that. Doesn't have to be about bodybuilding, how we look or, or powerlifting and how much we're lifting and things like that. Or it doesn't have to be about running. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, CrossFit kind of like combines a lot of different elements of different uh, parts of fitness, yeah. doesn't it? Well, High Rocks um, is similar, but it's, I would say without Olympic lifting, really. And it's nice it's a fixed event as well as you were saying like it's always the same event so then you can improve or you can go you know, next time I'm going to I think that's why people like it because it is a fixed event and you know I now know that that took me 1 hour 35 minutes to complete and 8 seconds to complete a, a high rocks event yeah um, so you're going to smash it next the challenge would, would you do it again would I do it again to try, try and beat that time yeah, yeah. definitely I would 100 Glasgow March so I'm doing it in Glasgow but I'm going to do it do the doubles I'm doing it with one of my nice one of my good friends Kevin Cuthbert from uh, Perth Kevin Cuthbert personal nice. training that's um, 300 or no no that's uh, that's one of my no, other yes. pals okay yeah I know I know, no. actually do, do know what you mean Mike Lindsay Club 300 Perth Better God give him a shout you know as well. what? it's crazy so we <laughs> I hate you right now I can't name names but you can you just shout out whoever you want he's like you can't name that you can't name that shouting out people are terrible that's nonsense <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just talking absolute crap, um, but yeah, I thought I thought we there might be one or two people that are I thought you could do like a relay. No one in your like Chris is quite into that sort of stuff as well, isn't he? I think he would be. I think I think there's a few in our gym now that would I would, would be interested it, yeah. in it. Um, and and the good thing about about an event like that is that okay, you might you might look online and see like some really super fit people, you know promoting high rocks or whatever and think oh fuck it's not for me and, and it does look hard and even Barry says it's hard and it's that next thing but you know you can do it in pairs which 
So do you, in, in some do you take some ways a, makes a, it an event a, each or what do you do? So when you do it, you do it in pairs, you still have to do the, all the running. So you have to do all the running together. Ah, but okay. each workout, each element, so the lunges, the wall balls, the sled, all that sort of stuff that we spoke about a second ago, you break it up. So you, you, if we, so like, doing if it, we did, we run together, but then I, would, I say you're doing the lunges. I would do it with you, but like, I know that you do not like your running. I can run 10k. Like, maybe. I, can, I won't be able to walk afterwards, but I'll run 10k. We should do one together in the future. Why not? That would be fun. I will, there's something in my head that if you gave me a challenge that I wouldn't be good at, I would still do it. I've run a 10k with no training and I couldn't walk for like two weeks afterwards. My hip flexors were gone. My calves are gone, but I'll still do it. Yeah. I would I would complete that. My time would not be good, <laughs> but I will finish it. If well, I started, I'll finish it. Well, you can do it in pairs, which I, I'm not saying it's easier because I, I'd, I'd imagine you'd probably push a little bit harder because you've got those little recovery periods that you don't get when you're doing yeah, it your own. Yeah, it'd be quite nice. So I think it would still be really hard, but like I think that would maybe be slightly easier. Um, and you, also with, with the events... It, uh, Again, I'm asking for. I'm quite ignorant to it. Like, if you're we, asking for a friend, <laughs> if you, yeah, but I'm asking for interest. You know, if if you were going to do like the wall balls, would you have to do all 100? And I just sit there and watch, or could you do 50 and I can do 50? I think we can, uh, we can, we can mix it up. So we can. Ah, right, okay, that's right. I good. can do 20, you can do 20, or I do 25, you do 25, I do 50, you do 50. Yeah, I think it's like that. That's pretty cool because then in a relay you can like you can tag in etc. You know? I'm no expert, but I'm willing to give you my insights uh, into into it if 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 you want them. Um, <laughs> I would do it, but yeah, I probably have to get good at running, wouldn't I? There's a relay as well, and I I, I think how that's the, what four. Yeah, and uh, and you base I, th I think how the relay works, which this this is how I think it makes it more accessible to wider ranges of fitness, um, is that you would split the race into four sections. So you would only do a quarter of the race each. Does that make sense? Even so, the running? Yes. I think that's how it works, yeah. So you'd mm -hmm. only have to, say, run 2K each. It's, Seems you know, a bit. And then do two events each. So what you're saying? Seems a bit what? <laughs> I'm not announcing that. It seems a bit easy. That seems a bit easy. I feel well, like I, I could do that if, tomorrow if you asked me to. 2K in, like, two events. Yeah, well, it would be easier, wouldn't it? But it maybe it maybe get running. It maybe allows <laughs> now you're doing your nine k. Get running. It maybe allows more people to get involved. And, yeah, true. And to I, it'd, be, it'd it. be a good fun day out. I feel like yeah, solo is pretty brutal then in comparison, right? It yeah, it was it was brutal, but it was also very rewarding. Um, and <clears throat> if anyone is 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 going to do it for the first time, like you know, you could you could probably learn from a few of my mistakes or things that I did good. Uh, so for example, on the day, my number one would be, be make sure you're organized, make sure you're, you know exactly where you're going and make sure you've got everything that you need. So this is coming from the guy who's left his phone in his van tonight and was yeah. stressing to find it. So I turned up at the wrong actual uh, location. <laughs> where did you turn up? I don't know. I was, just, at, I was at the Guinness factory. I don't know how I managed there, but I had a couple of bites and I went no. over. Do you know what it was, right? Well, so like... It was in Dublin, and uh, there was the Dublin Marathon was on that weekend. Okay, same right? weekend. So, like always before the, the, the marathon, they'll have like an expo, like you know, where, yeah. where all the runners and that can go and I don't know, pick up their their bibs and their and their merchandise and all that. You look at going like these guys are skinnier no. than I thought they were. <laughs> no, no, I'm heading in the right direction, following a little map. But I, th I start seeing all these people like look like they're. High rocks people doing a sport event, so I put the map off. I'll just follow them because I think that's the right people. <laughs> I turned up at the wrong place. I turned up at the marathon. It was only it wasn't that far away. In that, to be fair, eventually got to the right place, so it was it was fine. But then I realised I forgot my uh, my ID. So you walked home and Barry, and they went prove it. He <clears throat> went, oh, I can't. <laughs> Do you have to go back and get it? Nah, she accepted my bank card, I think, which I had with me. So okay, that was accept. Here's a good tip for you. But this has saved me a lot of times in my life. Supposed to be I have a screenshot of my passport that I sent to my dad. And whenever I'm somewhere, I'm like, oh, I don't have my ID. I'm like, oh, I do have a screenshot. <laughs> do you, do they accept you like that? that? I've got away with it once or twice. Obviously not traveling, but other places, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, be organized and um, get there early. Um, so you've got plenty. I did get there. I, I would have been there early. <laughs> I wasn't as early as I'd like to be yeah. but 
get there early, but maybe not too early that you're, you know, I think about. sometimes when you, when you go to like, I don't know what you think of it, like if you've done an event in the past or powerlifting stuff, if you're there all day and you're, and you're there way before you compete, you're kind of fatigued a little bit by the time you get started there. Eh? Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. And then you have time to like overthink like it, mentally, right? I think, you know. Yeah, yeah, you're overthinking it, right? You're sitting there for ages. I can, I can see why that would be a problem, yeah. So I wouldn't get there too early, but just early enough where the, that you can have a wee walk around the yeah, place. Yeah, settle in a little bit and then... Figure out your yeah. bearings, um, you know, watch other people do it, see how it works and, and just calm your nerves a little bit because that's that's what I did and it helped a lot, actually. I walked around the building and I just watched people doing the sled and all that and I was like, okay, you know, he looks like he's dying. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be tough. He, he's doing it this way or just I just picked up little tips last minute which yeah. kind of helped me um, so get there early make sure you, you're in the warm up area ready to get warmed up in plenty of time but do, they, do they give you like a warm up or do you have to no. just do it yourself <clears throat> there's an area you can warm up and the, all the kits there there's there's floor space you can practice the, the sled and all that sort of stuff just get to the warm up area like you, again you don't need an hour to warm up you need to but 30 minutes is probably good, you know? Give, yeah, yeah give, give yourself, if you want to just like ease yourself into it, you know, give yourself a little bit more time, but you don't need to be there, you know, way, way, way in advance. You'll be, you'll, you'll, you'll be mentally fatigued before you even start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, as it turned out, I, I was a bit lat latchy getting to the, to the warm up area. Um, and I, I did quite a quick warm up, and it probably was good actually, because it just meant I was straight into the race and, and done. You know, but I would do a quick warm up. I wouldn't want to be there for too long again because yeah. I would overthink it and get stressed. Exactly, exactly. So t twenty or thirty minutes, I think, I think is is good enough. And and if you've practiced a a warm up that you that you like to do, just do the same thing. Have a go at one or two, two of the. Yeah, I would. I, if what well, can you just like do the stuff that's there? Quickly? Yeah, yeah. So so I, that's so, what I would so do. I saw like, the sled sitting there. I was like, right, let's see if I can push, push that it a little bit. Push that a wee bit. Yeah, that's good. Cool. Skier, pull it a little bit. So I was going into the race with a little bit more. Less anxiety, more confidence, more chill. Getting a feel for it, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, and then just simple things like make sure you're well rested, taper into it. Um, we've spoken the, the podcast before about deloads and things like that. You know, it makes no sense to smash yourself the week Yeah, don't before. do the, don't do the whole High Rocks event the day before doing the High Rocks event. No, <laughs> no. I think... And you're, I'm guessing your last week was pretty chilled as a whole. Like you're going to keep moving and doing stuff, but like nowhere near the, that sort of intensity. Yeah, I think my last hard workout was on the Monday and then the event was on the Saturday and I very much just did like really easy light stuff, just keeping the body ticket over. What was sort of stuff of were, you, were you doing to train for it? Were you doing like your boot camps, et cetera, that sort of stuff? <clears throat> so training training wise for it, I think what, what I think is really, really important is, well, one for me was was to get good at running. Because that was I was a week. That was the first thing you did. Remember that was a week. Speaking about high rocks, you went yeah. went out for some five k's and stuff. And I'm glad I did because it's it's, it's basically a disguised running event. So if you're not yeah. if you're not good at running or you're not prepared to run or you don't like running, it's, a, it's to, maybe to me, not something that, that you're going to enjoy. Or the, yeah, the running and the hundred wall walls. <laughs> yeah. The rest, of it, I'm like, yeah, you know what? That's not bad. That's not bad. So the rest of it sounds pretty so, cool. So so incorporating running into your routine is, is quite important. Um, as I wasn't a runner and hasn't done a lot of running for a long time, I thought it was important just to, you know, start getting running into my sort of schedule and my routine and getting used to it. And at first, you know, I found it difficult. I, I didn't enjoy it as too much at the start, picking up little niggles. But eventually I was like, oh, I'm starting to enjoy this. I'm adapting. Body's getting stronger. Would you say that you're like the fittest you've possibly ever been then from doing this sort of training? Or what would you say? <sighs> Have you been fair? Probably, yeah. You, you've done a bit of both, like everything now. Really, when you think about it, you've you've done powerlifting, you've done bodybuilding, you're, you're doing like fitness challenges now. Like, well, I'll do anything. What's next? Yeah, <laughs> bloody hell! You must be the fittest you've ever been if you're doing that. And you, I, people said to me, I remember a girl came in and she was like, she was coming in for a day pass at our gym, and she trains in Glasgow, and uh, she was like, oh, everyone in my gym is doing high rocks, blah blah blah, and she's like, one hour thirty is like a really good time, and I remember you're like, oh, you got one hour thirty five, so mm -hmm. it must be good. I, I again, I haven't looked into it much apart from speaking to people about it more than anything else. I haven't googled it and looked at high rocks, but well, I think for your first time, I wouldn't get too caught up on yeah, it's like the it's numbers. like powerlifting though. Like you go yeah. to get a feel for it the first time and just take the box. The fact that you've done one and you've completed it, um, 
is probably yeah. achievement. And you know? you'll be more confident next time, you know, things you might yeah. have to improve on, et cetera. And it's like, you know, that's the advice I'd give anyone if they were going to powerlift or bodybuild or anything like that. If it's your first time, just you know, enjoy it. Don't, don't expect to win it. <laughs> yeah. Don't expect. You might, you never know you might, <laughs> you never know you might. But the chances are you won't. Yeah, chances are you won't. There'll be more experienced people there that are doing it for the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time. Yeah, I've learned a lot. Who will have an edge and, you know, that's just the way it is. But, you know, just enjoy what it. What was the best time on the day? Do you know? I think it was like an hour or just under. I had a feeling. Like just under. An hour. Just yeah. under maybe. That's brutal. You know what I mean? So like, you know, fast, fast times. But yeah, so back to the sort of tips on, on, on training. Um, for me, it, it was get good at running, but it's also very, very important to to make sure that you're strong and your your body's resilient. You're not going to pick up injuries. Strength training uh, was a huge part of my training for for the event. And you know, anyone that, that that's doing high rocks, uh, if you, if you're you know neglecting actual proper strength work, you're, you're probably missing a trick. Yeah, like there. you're going to do that sled push, and you're just would destroy you. Your legs need to be strong. Your legs need to be really strong. So are strong. you still doing strength training then? Like what, what yeah, sort of stuff yeah, are you doing? Yeah. Just your just your usual standard stuff that I that I like doing all the time. So like squats, deadlifts, um lunges, single leg exercises, nice. pulling based movements, uh, upper body work, you know, just all the usual stuff. And I think, you know, the more resilient you are, the more the, the more strength your body has, um the the more you're going to to find these exercises easier, do you know? Yeah, yeah, hundred um, percent. So you know, I feel like I've got to do high rocks now. <laughs> you, Everyone's you, doing the Glasgow one. Try to do it, Barry. I don't think you can get in it now. Oh it's well, fully booked. Is it fully booked? Like, why, be don't, why don't me and you do a different one? We'll look up. We'll do a different one. Um, I'll have to get good at running. I'll but, have to lose some weight to get good at running. But also, you know, what you're, you're speaking about people coming to your gym and you see them hopping off the treadmill and doing this. That I next love thing. it. Yeah. You need to you need you need to get comfortable with doing workouts like that as well, and feeling that feeling of uh, what what we would call compromised running. So like running when you're when you're fatigued, when your legs are fatigued, when you're when when you're already you know tired or you, your muscles are are have just basically done some mad strength thing. How how can you cope with that when you start running again? Yeah, because I oh, I obviously train like that, and um, had I not, I would have probably really struggled because, and I think that's probably something I would I'll get better at over time, um, <clears throat> because you because you've really got to get good at uh, coming off these these events and and just getting going. And 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 that's why you'll get a quicker time because you won't you won't yeah, you don't walk. have that rest period where you're well you won't walk sort of to the to the to the gate to get back on the track you'll you'll just run there do you know what I mean yeah um, and you'll 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 get faster you'll get a faster overall time because of it uh, because you're not faffing about as much in between things um, <clears throat> so definitely that but but don't get injured don't get injured in your training and if you are getting injured in your training then you're doing something wrong you're not working on you're overloading something. That and you, you maybe need to take a step back. You maybe have to strengthen certain areas. You're maybe not strong enough to to take that volume of training on at that that moment in time. Um, and if if you're also if you're not very good at the individual exercises, I feel like there must be a less injury risk with the high rock training because the amount of variation you're doing as well. You know what I mean? See, with like powerlifting, you're very repetitive in like your deadlift, squat, bench, deadlift, squat, bench. There's a lot of frequency with that but because there's so many different workouts in your high rocks right you're rowing you're skiing again you're wall balling you're lunging you're pushing a sled you're doing like loads of different stuff so you must be quite strong in like a lot of different areas yeah but if a lot of people are getting into it that are maybe not used to this type of stuff yeah they're going to pick up injuries aren't they yeah but again it's not being silly right because it's, it's, yeah. it's more fitness based and being cr like pushing yourself strength wise to the to the brink so i'm just saying like you know have a focus in your training to sort of, you know, build your body to stay clear, yeah, of, yeah. To stay clear of injury, you know? So like, you know, making sure you're, you're, if you're doing a lot of running, you know, you're, you're training your posterior chain, you know, you're yeah, making sure your, your ankles are strong and, and, and mobile and, you, you know, just look, everyone will have their individual weaknesses and their weak, their weak points and, and maybe incorporating specific exercises to you and your training that's different to other people is important uh, as as well. Um, 
but yeah, that's uh, my sort of take on it. Matthew. That's what you've been up to, and you're doing the next. Well, you do March as well, so you're gonna do another one. Would you do another one after that? Would you keep going? Well, I'd like to do one on my own again because I feel like you know I've done one. Let's do another one. Let's see if I can. Improve, yeah, so you're gonna do improve, this March one, then improve you might do my another time. One after that. Let's see if I can improve my training. Um, and get better at my training. How did you hear about it? Because now, obviously, I see it everywhere. Like I do, I genuinely, I'll, I'll go on. I do, I do have TikTok, terrible. Um, but you go on High Rocks training. I'll go on Instagram High Rocks training. So where did you hear about it? Well, it came to Glasgow last year in March. Okay. And it it, it probably wasn't that huge at that point, um, but I saw a few people that I know that, that that took part in it. I did it, okay. And that was probably the first time that I sort of thought, oh, what's that? And then I did a bit of d digging about and... Thought, why not? Yeah, Let's do that. I thought, that sounds pretty cool. Maybe maybe that's something that I that I can do. And yeah, it's not it's something that's, that's kept me focused and motivated just now. Do you know what I mean? Might yeah, not, have, not, have you enjoyed might... the training more than other styles of training? Would you say like when you were doing powerlifting or bodybuilding in the past that you maybe enjoy this more or what would you think? I've definitely enjoyed it. I, I feel like whenever I get my teeth stuck into something, I will enjoy it. I like, yeah. if it's involving exercise and fitness and strength and pushing yourself and sweating and that sort of stuff, it just, I, I tend to just, you know, end up enjoying it and, 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 and knowing that I can get better at certain things. So like, it's, it's a motivator. Yeah, 100%, I get that. But powerlifting, why I didn't keep going with it was probably the monotony of, of focusing on just w the three main lifts all yeah. the time. I know there's, I know we do other exercises as well, but you... It's very fatiguing as well. The I heavy lifting, I and I have to say, like, you know, it just wasn't for me on a long-term basis. I think you felt that as well, though, because you, you mix your training The fatiguing up. was hard for me. Like, I felt just genuinely tired quite a lot, and... I probably didn't do it as well as I, I could have done, but um, I just enjoy training. I enjoy the challenge of training. And I'm sure I'll find something at some point. I've been, my training is not as, as, <laughs> as exciting as yours right now. I seem to just be injured all the time. And I'm trying to fix it. I, I rehab, I do rehab. But um, I was deadlifting, like I built back up. I was deadlifting maybe two and a half months ago. I got a trap nerve again in my in my glute and it was an agonizing. Last time I got a trap nerve though, I was I couldn't walk for like, Two I'm not months, laughing, sorry. <laughs> two months, I was in so much pain. This one, I, thank God, I was like a week. And then I just, something, like it slipped and it, I felt great again. I was like, oh, thank God that's gone. I couldn't walk for like two, three days. You can ask my clients. I was like, <laughs> I remember going into work the day after. And I was like, I'm really sorry. I'm going to have to sit down. Like I, standing up was sore. Sitting down for too long was sore. Lying down for too long was sore. I had to keep rotating through the three to like keep myself mobile. Um, and now I have rehabbed my hip back up. Um, it's still a little bit dodgy. So again, people follow me on Instagram to see how I post about it now and again. And I'm trying to increase and I'm trying to fix it. Um, but it goes way back to when I was 18 and got a lower back injury. And it seems to all root from there that I get like back spasms. It just like locks up and then it ruins mm. my hips. And then my hips are ruined for a while. And I'm off, you know, it's just constant cycle. Um, and hopefully yeah, I'll get back up and get some PBs, etc. I'd like to hit some good lifts. I haven't got a squat PB since that 200 post lockdown, like, Two, three, two and a half, three years ago. It's miserable. So, um, Since you trained with me. Yeah, and then last time I went to go for a PB after that 200, I was going for 210. My back went into spasm. Uh, a 140 squat warming up for the 210. I couldn't move. I was like, oh, for God's sake. And again, it's nothing wrong. I filmed my sets. Didn't do anything wrong. It just went spasm. How do you so, feel when you're injured? Like, because, you know, a lot of people get injured. It's a, yeah, that's a really good point. Um, how do I feel? I It's annoying. It's demoving, it is, but then I'm very good at adapting. So what can I do? And then I'm like, okay, well, I'll program that, that, that. So what did I do? My hip was gone. I was like, well, initially I'll just do some machine work for my lower mm -hmm. body. Mm -hmm. And then I'll incorporate things like leg pressing and then hack squatting and going a bit heavy with those. And then when that feels good for a while and I'm happy with those, then I'll go back to squatting and deadlifting. So I have like a process. Um, I do feel like a lot of people, yeah, they get injured and they're like, oh, my shoulder's dodgy, so... Yeah, I won't go today. I'll take a couple of weeks off. No, you've got to use the joint. You've got to keep it moving. If mm -hmm. it's sore, don't load it too much, but try and keep it moving or try and rehab it in some sort of way. Don't just say, if I leave it, it'll get better because it won't. And I've done that where I'm like, oh, I'll take some time off because my hip's dodgy. And a month and a half, I'm like, okay, it's not really fixed. So you've got to go. You've got to get moving, don't you? I actually think 
one of the worst things you can do when you're injured is do stop. Nothing, yeah. You know, um, because I think you know mentally how is it going to affect you? Is physically how is it going to affect you? Um, and you know, adapt ad- adapting your training is 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 a really 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 good tip. Um, Throwing the towels like it's never the, it's never a good option. It's yeah. never is, and I feel like yeah, a lot of people do do that, and you see it in them. Um, you see it in top end sports, don't you? As well, when people get injured and they they never come back the same. Like you'll see, you obviously watch football. I watch football. You'll see a football player who like tears his ACL. Let's just take Virgil Van Dyke for example. It's recent when he tore his ACL. He was the best defender in the world. Tore his ACL, came back, and wasn't quite there for a season. Wasn't his best season afterwards. Now he's got this confidence back and he's playing very well. So you have these injuries. Top end athletes get them, and you've got to work through them. You've got to adapt. You've got to fix the problem. Mm-hmm. You can't just go, oh, it'll fix itself. It never will. I think it's to be expected, though, that you'll go through a period where you're not going to be firing all cylinders. Yeah, 100%. And then it's accepting that and being smart about it. You know what I mean? But again, you get people who train through their injuries. And I've, <laughs> I'm sure you've done it. I've done it a lot. And then when it's we like three it, months time, you're still not really progressing and you're still in pain. You're like, that was stupid. Yeah, yeah. Because when we say adapt and continue, we're not saying train through your injuries and train yeah. them, train the movements that find are, what works that are causing pain are we yeah find what works i've got clients for example who like yeah i had a, I had a client who's um he's maybe probably listening uh he's he, he's a he shoots he will be listening he shoots and uh he's also he works in oil and gas as well um i, I think he's still in oil and gas he's a contractor but he shoots on the weekends so he does it he's like a gamekeeper basically sort of vibe and mm-hmm. he was moving a animal and he slipped <laughs> and he rolled his knees knee was buggered so what's the option of that? Like, okay, we can't squat right now. We probably can't deadlift. So for the next couple of months, we'll focus on upper body. And he's got rehab stuff for his lower body. So we can still progress him and keep him moving. And then he's also rehabbing his knee. Fantastic. Then his knee's rehabbed. We can go back to lower body training. Rather than just leaving it and hoping for the best in the three months time going, yeah, my knee's still not quite there yet. Maybe I need to go to see physio or need to get it fixed or rehab it. Do that straight away. Yeah. Find what you can do. <clears throat> tick the boxes, keep progressing, keep coming. So he could have gone like, yeah, I'll take two months off the gym, I can't manage. But we're still improving, we're still progressing. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Good points, good points. Um, so, Matthew, Christmas is coming up. Yeah. Big question for you. Go on. We're now, what date is it today? Is it November the what? 23rd. Is your tree up? <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you want to know someone? <laughs> I don't know why I'm going to say this. My tree's technically not down, Barry. You've kept it up all year. No, so <laughs> it made me laugh because I found it. So I've got I've got two I've got a two bedroom flat, and in my spare bedroom, last year I had my tree and I was like, oh fuck, it. I can't be bothered taking this down. So I took my tree and I just shoved it in this cupboard with everything still on still it. Still on it. Yeah. So it's in the I opened the cupboard and went, oh yeah, it's all, it's all I forgot ready. about it. Take it. I was gonna be. I was take it down at some point. I'll take it all off. I just forgot and I looked at him. But why? Why? Why would you need to? If you've got the room to just store a full yeah, tree. Yeah, no, true. Also, with yeah. all the baubles on. Yeah, right? true. Like you're saving yourself a huge job. I have saved myself a job, so my tree's not up, but it's not technically down either. Do you but like, I will take it out at some point. Like you know, like like in my in my house, like. Emma and the boys it's like it's like a big event put the tree up but everyone seems to enjoy doing it like, yeah but like I I find it like quite stressful I'm like this is this is a lot of like yeah. a lot of mess nice a lot though. of work and like <laughs> we I'll, never really did it my mum used to just do it by herself to be fair we used to here's one for you we used to steal our trees you used to steal your trees well we lived on a farm going into people's living rooms and stealing their <laughs> yeah do you not remember when we trees? ran in yours no we um we we lived on a farm and they they would <laughs> they would um, farm obviously like the trees in the forest beside us. So okay, pre Christmas like December, my dad would go, "All right, we're gonna go down and get a tree." I think you should whisper this part. Yeah, we're gonna go get a tree. I was like, "Okay, cool." We'd go down, bring it back. Ah, so you went in and you cut down the tree and you took it home. Yeah, don't no no deal since this anyway. Yeah, to be fair, it was like twenty years ago, so prove it. <laughs> but now my mom goes out and she my mom has a, a has this a beautiful idea of finding the ugliest tree possible okay and she puts that in her well, well, while we're confessing about stealing stuff go <laughs> off well, you stole tell okay. me the tree so when i was growing up i lived quite close to a strawberry and raspberry farm right okay i liked them i used to go to them as a kid yeah. so i would quite often in the summer go in and get like 
a big massive bag <laughs> stick, of strawberries. Yeah, stick a bin bag in. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, it's funny what but, you do. And I, I, it's a nice memory because I remember it being snowy and we'd always go down together, like me and my two brothers and my dad, and just like pick our tree and nick it. It's nice, isn't it? Sweet, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite cute. So we did that. Not my my mum decre- decorated it, decorated, decorated it. Um, they bet the strawberries were great. I bet they tasted better. Yeah. So Christmas is coming up. Um, we've already said on this podcast, I'm sure, Matthew, that we're going to do at least three more episodes before Christmas, did we? Yeah, we'll do it. We'll manage. Yeah, so I'm not going to wish you Merry Christmas just yet. Not yet, because you'll... Because we'll We've got three more episodes. That. Yeah. But it's a tough time of year, guys, so try and stay motivated. Get out, stay busy. Keep ticking the boxes, keep training hard. Get Why some not? fresh air. It's December, it's not a write-off. You got to keep going. No. It's only 12 months in a year, you can't take one off. And although January is a good month for our industry... Um, it does annoy me that that people wait to January. Would you say so for you? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's like you know, change now. Don't don't, don't wait. wait. Don't wait to like oh, it's a, a certain month now that I can start progressing or change for the better. December's a like, better month to get on board with a personal trainer, a gym, it, or especially anything. if you're already like a lot of people who probably listen to this podcast are maybe already in a gym as well. Mm-hmm. If you're in a gym and you need help. You want to get maybe some coaching, some online coaching, whatever. Get some programs written for you. Do it now because the PTs will be less busy. Get, get involved. Get ahead of the game. Before get ahead of the game. Yeah, it so starts. January's to, gonna be manic to get busy. Yeah, but you don't. You don't work in a commercial gym like me. <laughs> you don't have the. I'm sure it'll be chaos this this year. Be good fun. Oh, good. Oh, we like it when it's busy as well. We're exactly. not. Com- we're it's not good complaining. Fun. No, it's good fun. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed um, this episode and we will be back in soon. touch. Very soon. Very, very soon um, from from us both. Have a, have a great day, morning, evening, afternoon, whatever time of day it is you're listening to this. Have a great one. See you later, guys. <laughs>